Alrighty folks, uh, here on a nice crisp Sunday afternoon, late afternoon, a little after 4 o'clock, the sun is uh, making its way down there. But anyway, here at the 6110M, I uh, thought I'd just do a quick go around update on the tractor as it is, um, which there really ain't a whole lot to go over, but when I do a live stream or anything, that seems to be one of the most popular questions I get is how the 6110M is doing so far. Um, so I decided to give a brief update, although I haven't really put many hours on the tractor. I think we'll look at it here in a second, but I think there's about 34 or 5 hours on the tractor. Uh, and I hope my battery holds up long enough on this camera to do this video. But anyway, um, so, uh, as you can see, I've just been feeding hay in the mud muck, and uh, uh, as Cow Camp 87 would say, uh, she's really clean <laughs> compared to his. So uh, I would agree. <laughs> his looks like it's been through a, a mud pit and back, uh, completely under. But anyway, um, no, no pun intended there. But uh, anyway. Uh, I've been around the tractor so far haven't seen any leaks uh, signs of anything other than and I'm probably not going to pick it up on this camera yeah um, the transmission the top of the transmission and you're not going to be able to see it I don't have a light handy to show it to you I'll get the camera in there as far as I can but uh, and I can barely see it myself because it's dark but there is uh, some sections of the transmission. There's one right there in the center that's probably not even a foot long. Uh, I can see just a little bit of where some dirt and dust is settling on those joints uh, where those, those pieces of transmission bolt together uh, where there's a little bit of oil residue that is... Um, uh, you don't, it looks like a little bit of a leak. Uh, but it may very well just be some oil residue left over from the manufacturing process because it's odd it's right on the very top uh, and nothing's coming around the sides or anything so uh, what I plan to do on that is the next time I actually clean the tractor up or go over it I'll, I'll make sure to clean those areas real good and then I'll keep an eye on it from there but it ain't getting any worse so that's what makes me think it's just uh, some oil residue left over maybe from the manufacturing process uh, when it's put together and it's just collecting a little little dust and, and it, it makes it look like it's a little bit of a leak but uh, I don't believe it is just yet but we shall see uh, I've got it here close to the fuel tank as you may have noticed um I just filled it up with fuel and I filled it up pretty full uh, I could see it right there oh uh, and I cut it off um but uh the DF, uh, I've noted to you guys, the DF gauge hasn't moved. Well, it has finally moved two bars. It moved two bars at once. I find it odd because uh, when you open that DF tank, there is a uh, little flap in there. And I was trying to push it open with my finger and look down in there to see if it was still DF up the filler neck or something to that effect. And I put the cap back on when I got in here the gauge moved down so uh, the when I did remove the cap like I said it is sealed and uh, it uh, you know I could hear a little air go in or out whatever I don't know if it had anything to do with it or not uh, you know it was just a little you know bit of air come out because I don't know if it's vented I, I don't know but it's moved so the DEF gauge over here has moved two bars and I believe I tried to count I think there's 20 bars here so it's moved two bars out of the 20 bars of DEF and well there you can see it 34.4 hours uh, now I reset this the last time I put fuel in this tractor I filled it up approximately three quarters of a tank and I reset this gallon per hour so just me running around feeding hay at about 1500 rpms is about as high as i i run it feeding hay except for moving going up down the road between here and there which ain't that far um 1.4 gallons per hour it averaged in that 23.4 gallons it used 
Uh, and it was down here getting pretty close to this little red mark uh, when I just put fuel in it here a few minutes ago. So uh, it, it probably, let's say, if I had it three, let's say it used half a tank. So uh, that's 20, 23 and a half gallons. And I was thinking this tank was somewhere around 50 gallons. Uh, fuel capacity but I, I don't remember that number right off the top of my head so that would somewhat jive uh, if that's correct if I used around a half a tank of fuel that would be in 20 say 25 gallons if it's a 50 gallon tank but I have to look back in the specs but uh, anyway um, yeah not el not much else to uh, really go over on it at this point like i said just there's not much going on right now for me to do with it uh, i know cow count uh him and me talk via facebook some different things i know he puts hundreds of hours a week but uh until uh we get better weather and start actually do it fertilizing and that kind of stuff uh i will not be uh putting many hours on it till then uh, I have got some property that I've got to clean up. Um, I'll be putting some hours on it then. I'll probably spend several hours cleaning that property up. Um, that they, uh, it's, it's property that I rent that uh, they did some logging on last year and they've really made a mess that I've got to, I got to clean up. So, uh, uh, but I'm just, I'm, I'm waiting on a couple of things to happen there. Uh, I'm waiting on hunting season to be over because I know some people hunt up in that area and I don't want to bug them. And I never know when they're around. And the other thing is just so wet, I'm going to make more of a mess than, 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 than not make, you know, trying to fix one. So, uh, there's a lot of tree limbs and stuff. I have got to run my... Uh, hydraulic lines uh, that I've got I took them off the Massey uh, that I've, I've had those lines for years that I I run to the back and run to the front to run my grapple my brush grapple and of course I will do plan to be getting square bell grapple so I'm gonna need those lines on this tractor I plan to use this tractor for doing my square bell grappling uh, I plan to have the uh, 6415 running the baler at this point so the 6415 will run uh the heston over here uh and uh i'll rake move bales whatever with the 6110m here's the sprayer no more progress on it yet i have just not had time and i've got some stuff i gotta go do right now too so uh that's just a real brief update on the 6110M. It's just, it's not much to tell you. I haven't really put many hours on it yet. It just, it got here at that time of year where we were pretty much winding down and uh, due to the drought and lack of hay to sell, I mean, I'm not, I'm not moving the, the amount of hay that I normally move and sell during the winter months. So, uh, it's just what it is right now. But, uh, I have not seen it go through a regen yet. One of you's probably gonna ask me about that. Uh, the 5065E, while it was here, went through a regen around 50 hours. So, um, of course, this is a whole nother engine and setup. So, eh, who knows? But like I said, I'm not running it that hard right now. So, I uh, still got the three, <laughs> the three full-length spears on this hay fork, uh, and. Uh, I haven't done anything about that yet. I, I like them and for for things, and some things I don't like them. I've just kind of been deciding how I want to leave it, but I'm just leaving it alone right now. But, uh, and, uh, let's see, a video yeah, I should have gone up already. I've already seen about the recall on the loader latching system, something to do with it. That has not happened yet. Uh, but deer will be coming out and inspecting that to make sure it was assembled properly and is not a safety issue. Uh, but uh, regarding the 6110M, I can't think of anything else much to say about it uh, right now uh, until I can finally get to putting some hours on it and things. And 
whatnot. So uh, that's my brief update on it, as it is. Um, I, I do look forward to this uh, this year's hay season with it and, and using it, bailing with it, and uh, everything. So uh, uh, I'm still uh, figuring out the mower situation, how big of a mower I actually want to put behind this thing. Uh, but I do plan to do all my mowing with this tractor. Uh, so um, I've been uh, toying the idea of actually getting a fairly, a, a much bigger, well, I don't say much bigger, but a few foot longer mower than what I'm currently running, which will require a little bit more horsepower. So uh, I've got the horsepower here, so uh, I'm trying to decide whether I want to go with the bigger mower, spend the extra money, and just go and get a get the longer longer one that I can, uh, 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 you know, mow, mow more quicker with. Uh, like I said, it'll require a little bit more horsepower, but that should not be a problem here, or even for the 6415. I think it's around, I think it's about 85 PTO horsepower. Uh, like I said, this one dynoed at 89 PTO horsepower. Uh, I forget what it was rated, 85 or 87, but, uh, uh, so should be good there. Uh, I think the biggest mower I'm looking at is about 65 to 70 PTO horsepower requirement. So should be good. But uh, anyway, that's enough of me rambling on. I just wanted to give you all just the quick status of the 6110M for what it's worth. But the DF gauge did finally move. So uh, I assume that system is working properly. Whether that's a good thing or not, I don't know. But thanks for watching. See you later.